Good morning, you lovely, lovely lot of people, you. Made a cup of tea. Today, well, it's gonna be a bit of a day, I think. I'm gonna go back to basics, which to be fair, looking back on it now, I should have done right at the very start. I think I'd have saved myself a whole heap of drama, whole heap of stress, and a whole heap of money. <laughs> but it's never too late. We're going back to basics today, back to the start. We are going to make some base candles. And for any of you that are just starting your journey, that's where you need to start your journey. <laughs> the only problem I have is, you know, when you start making candles and they advise you to buy only one scent or fragrance, maybe a couple, one wax, a handful of jars. Well, the thing is, unless you crack that candle, in the first few takes, you're going to need a few more jars. <laughs> I have used loads. They're all full of candles that have not worked and I'm pretty much out of vessels. So I will get all that wax out of those jars so that I can reuse those jars for test purposes. You would never reuse your jars for a candle that you were going to sell. We're testing. So I'm going to reuse the jars. I did a couple videos before showing how I could just re-wick these candles, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the core out and put different wicks in. For my own peace of mind, my own clarity in my head, <laughs> because it's all got rather confusing, I'm going to literally melt them all down, get rid of the wax, clean out the jars, reuse the jars. And we're going to chase things up a bit. I'm going to make base candles with the CB135 wax. I'm going to make base candles with the Eco Cocoa wax that I have got the biggest bag of, which I bought a while ago and haven't touched. And then, just to make things a little bit more exciting, I'm going to do a blend. I am going to blend the CB135 with some coconut wax. I don't know what the cocoa wax will do because I think that's also quite a soft wax, but Let's give it a go. Let's just get all in there today and just do the lot. So hence, I've made a cup of tea because I think I'm going to need a few of these today. Let's get melting some candles. Let's get this show on the road. So here we are. Now I'm thinking I will make three of each. Three of the CB135s, three of the Eco Coco, and three of the Eco Coco CB135 blend. time. Now then, I am aware that this will be thought of as an absolute waste of wax. But if I don't do this, they are literally just going to sit in my vessels forever because I am never going to burn the amount of candles that I have got that are wasted. The solution I've got is to melt this down and start again, literally. So I'm going to pour all the wax into these so that there's somewhere for them to go and then Think about how I'm going to dispose of that wax at another stage. Whether you can dispose of wax nicely at the recycling centre is something I will find out. But that is my plan. Slight change of plan. So I've got all my candles here. Those three are the same. So I'm, I'm going to melt them down and reuse them. Just see. I don't know if that would give me an accurate test result, but it could give me a heads up. So we might as well do that. The only thing different in these three candles is the wick. Ooh, look, it's gone all chalky. Let's 
that is three jars emptied and there's another three currently melting but I have discovered something which I am going to share with you because I'm a little bit confused one of the candles that I have just melted I've took the top layer of wax off now bearing in mind before I put it in the melter we knew it wasn't a safe candle we knew it had failed its test but it looked fine look at this I've took a bit of the wax off and look at that. It's like it's been reduced to chalk. It's like a proper powdery, chalky substance. It literally is in powder form. What's that? It's like, it's like flour. If that had been a candle that had passed its tests, there was nothing suspicious looking about this candle. So say that I'd gone to someone's home and they'd been burning it. What would have happened when they got to this point? That's proper baffled me now. How do I know that all these, when I finally crack the candle code, how do I know that it's not going to be like that in the middle? I mean, what, a, what chemical scientific mystery has occurred here? I need to know the answer to this question. So, all you brilliant people out there, what's happened to this candle? Here it comes. It's a mystery. I don't think I've come across an occurrence like that in anyone's videos. Very strange. I've done, I've done three candles. They were all made with the Nature C3 wax. Now I'm not in any way saying this is a problem with Nature C3 wax. We will see what happens with the last two I've put in, but it's just the Nature C3 wax that is producing this powdery substance because all three have got it. I'll show you. Do you see? It's like a powdery weirdness. So yes, I'm not suggesting there's anything wrong with the Nature C3 wax, but that is my findings now that we have become detectives. C3 wax is my first suspect. The fragrance oil on these is rock salt and driftwood. So that's interesting. Suspect number two. I should also point out, please don't do what I do. I'm obviously melting stuff here, I have my window open, I have my back door open, so I'm ventilated. But I don't know if this is actually healthy for you. So please don't do as I do. <laughs> I am not saying that this is a proven way to do things safely. I am going to need to go to the shop and purchase some kitchen towel because I'm going to go through this roll of toilet roll very, very quickly. tempted in any way to do what I'm doing wear gloves I've now got a bin bag it's proper messy and I don't know if getting I mean obviously it's not neat fragrance oil but I don't know oh now I'm gonna melt my bag and I the gloves on after after you've used the heat gun yeah I don't know what uh, effects melted candle wax that contains fragrance oil has on your hands so again, don't do what I do. <laughs> oh dear, proper messy this is. Picks me a little bit out of my comfort zone to be fair. But needs must. Save money where we can. 
This will be jar number six that we have now freed up, which is nice. Talking of fragrance oil, we might have a little chit chat about that in a minute. Somebody did ask me to make a video about fragrance oil. I don't believe I'm the right person to ask. <laughs> Not at the moment anyway. But we'll have a little chit chat anyway. And yes, these glasses do get a little bit hot whilst using the heat gun. Definitely one of those uh, don't try this at home videos. Hopefully if I say it enough, no one will try it at home. Right, put our glove on, AKA bin bag from the cupboard. I will be nipping to the shop soon to get some kitchen towel because you know, like I said, I'm going for the toilet roll. So now we have a pot full of wax that we are not going to be using. So that's that container full. And we have vessels. I've still got to melt these ones down. I went shopping. Latex free vinyl gloves, kitchen towel. So we are now better prepared, I feel. I think gloves are probably a must whenever you make candles. Yes, we now have plenty of those. Let's put them on. That is, unless, of course, you are allergic to said gloves, in which case, Maybe not the best thing for you. So these two need to be melted down and not reused. The candles we made the other day, we haven't tested yet. They are due to be tested possibly, well, they're due to be tested now. I'm just thinking when I can do them. Possibly Thursday, I reckon. So we'll test those, see how they perform. You never know, you might find I've done all this for nothing. We might have got the perfect candle over there on the show. But I still think having some base candles is a good idea, or rather base line candles. The idea behind the candles I'm making today is that there is going to be no fragrance oil in them. It's purely the wax and the wick. Now the idea is, if the candle and the wick perform very well together, it means if I then use that same wick, that same wax, and I add fragrance oil to the next candle, and the candle does no does not perform well the reason for that has to be the fragrance oil so then every candle you make after that in theory the only variable you have to change is the fragrance oil the reason the fragrance oil might not have worked is either the scent load so the percentage of fragrance oil you put in the candle that could be wrong or, as I've recently discovered, it could be that you're using a fragrance oil that is not very well suited to the wax you're using. Because apparently some fragrance oils do not work well with some waxes. And on that point, I will say, it could just be me again. You know, I'm not going to say that this is true. It could just be me and I'm missing something. But if I look at the websites in America for fragrance oils, they tend to put on there, there's one in particular, I think, is it called Candle Science or something? They will say on the list of fragrance oils, they will suggest what waxes they work well with. And I think it's Candle Science. They put little leaves next to each fragrance oil. To so, I don't know, if it had three leaves, that could suggest it works well with soy wax. In the UK, I can't find that information. If I look for a fragrance oil, it doesn't state there, this fragrance oil is well suited to soy wax, or this fragrance oil is not suited to, uh, to soy wax. Now, it could be on the website, it could be that you've got to spend an hour looking for that information but it certainly doesn't seem to be obvious to me. Because I then went through all the fragrance oils I've bought, trying to find out if I had in fact bought fragrance oils that were no good for the wax I'm using. But alas, I am none the wiser. That sort of information would be very handy indeed. The other thing I will say about America that's different to here, there was a suggestion that I try the CDN wicks, which I would love to try. Can I find them anywhere in the UK? No. I can get the CD wax, 
Nowhere seems to stock CDN wicks. Now, why is that, I wonder? Is that because the UK are onto a thing and they know that the CDN is the secret magic ingredient and therefore, if they stocked it, we wouldn't spend a fortune on supplies? Something else I discovered. I've watched a lot of videos. In a lot of them, they say that the flash point of your fragrance oil doesn't really matter. It does in terms of if you held by a, a flame, it could catch fire. Obviously, you have to be safe with your fragrance oils. Other than that, it's not made out to be something you really have to take much notice of. In terms of pouring it into your wax, etc., and so forth, it's not something you really have to take much notice of. Well, I have since found another website, and this is a UK one, that said, hey, you had a fragrance oil whose flash point was 94 degrees. That's the point where the fragrance oil combusts and the smell is given off. So, with regards adding fragrance oil to wax, there's a lot of people that say you should always add it at 185 Fahrenheit, is it? So basically, as soon as your wax melts to that temperature, you immediately pour in your fragrance oil. People don't do that. They wait till it gets down to like 70 degrees, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. My thinking with the flash points is that perhaps you do need to take it into account because if you've got a fragrance oil that will start combusting and evaporating at 94 because that's its flash point, well then yes, you could heat, you could add that in at 185 Fahrenheit, which I think is about 85, 90 degrees, I'm not sure. But if you had one that had a flash point of 70, degrees and i don't know what that is in fahrenheit i tend to use degrees so sorry if i'm getting a bit confused i'm trying to give it in fahrenheit because i think a lot of you use that let's say you've got fragrance oil that has a flash point of 70 degrees and you added that into your wax at 185 degrees fahrenheit which i think is 85 90 degrees that can't be good can it because surely as you add it it's going to combust and start evaporating so by the time you poured it won't your fragrance oil have gone or the smell surely then you need to add your fragrance oil at when the wax is less well the temperature of the wax is less than 70. that's how i've interpreted it and i am going to right with those flash points to make sure i'm not adding any fragrance oil into the wax at a temperature that is greater than the flash point and i'm going to see if that makes a difference Baby powder, baby powder. Jugs all clean, so I'm gonna get those waxes into these and melt them down so that we can re-pour those. And then we are good to start making our baseline candles. So we're getting there. So whilst I'm waiting, I will tell you about the fragrance oils. For the lady that asked about fragrance oils, I, there's not a lot I can obviously tell you. You did ask about blending them. Well, in the UK here, we can blend them, but we can't use that blend unless we've sent it away to be tested, uh, etc. And so I don't know what the test involves, but they've got to be done. They're, it's expensive to do that. But obviously, because you're blending two chemicals together, that's what needs to be done here. So it's not something that I am in a position to be doing anytime soon. I think in America, you're free to blend as you wish. I don't know, but I, that's the impression I get. But in the UK, that's definitely not the case. So I can't actually give you a video on blending fragrance oils because it's not something that I've done or will be doing anytime soon. All I can really tell you is the fragrance oils that I've already used and what I think of them. It might be a bit boring, but I don't know, it might be helpful. These are all ones I've tried. So the first one that I ever tried was rock salt and driftwood. I don't actually like the smell of this very much. No, I don't. It's all right from the bottle, but the candles that I did make, I didn't like the cold throw. And the hot throw for me was rubbish. But then you've got to remember I haven't achieved the perfect candle yet. So if I'd wicked it right, it might have been better. So I'm definitely not dissing this fragrance. When I ordered this fragrance, the reviews were very good for it. People would say it's their customer's favourite. So I'm not saying it's bad. It just hasn't worked for me yet. I don't actually like the smell of it very much, but there we are. This is Paradise Beach, which I haven't used, but it smells pretty nice. 
I'd imagine, well, for me, that smells a bit like a Malibu. You can imagine having a Malibu sitting on a beach on a palm island somewhere. Sandalwood and black pepper. I really like the smell of that one. I can't comment on it because I've only recently made candles with it. In fact, that was the last batch of candles I made and we haven't tested them yet. They smell, when I come into my kitchen, the kitchen smells amazing because that's where I keep them. But I haven't done the, the burn test yet, so I don't know what the hot throw's like, but it's a very nice fragrance. Velvet, peony and oud. Again, it's a, it is a nice fragrance, but it's, um, it's quite like I would say a, a distinctive fragrance. I don't know how to describe that. It is nice, but I can imagine you're either going to love it or you hate it. I don't know if it's going to suit everybody. I have used it, but the candle did not work. So again, can't comment on the hot throw, but I did get a hot throw. I just don't know how strong it would have been and how much better it would have been if the candle had worked properly. I do like that one. Mandarin and sandalwood again. I do like it, it's all right. I prefer the sandalwood and black pepper. So it's not on my favorites list. It's in with the rock salt and driftwood. List. Again, it just becomes, it's one of those, I like it at first, but then it just becomes a bit too much. So when I've got candles made with it and the room smell, I just get to a stage where I can't bear it anymore. Tiger Lily Rain, don't like that one at all. That's not for me. I know somebody commented that they like tiger lilies. So I'm sorry if that's, if you meant the actual fragrance, I, it's not doing anything for me, but whether it would actually be better out of the bottle and in a working candle is another thing. Then I've got the lavender, chamomile and vanilla, which is nice. It's quite sweet. I mean, it smells a bit like, it's, it's you know, when you go um, a motorway or whatever and you stop at a service station, and you walk into the toilets, it smells like that. <laughs> don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's not a bad smell. Then I've used fresh linen, which I do like. Who doesn't like fresh linen? And it is, it's it, it, what it says on the tin really, it does remind me of freshly washed clothes. So I do like that one. And that's quite a strong cold throw in the candles I've made, but again, I haven't achieved a good hot throw, so uh, I haven't achieved the right candle. So I hate to comment on the hot throw if I haven't made a candle that's good. And then of course we've got vanilla, which I do really like. I've made wax melts with this and they do smell pretty good. So that's all the fragrances I've tried, apart from I haven't obviously tried the Paradise Beach yet, but I will. So my favorites again are sandalwood and black pepper, Paradise Beach, I like the smell of it, I haven't tried it. Fresh linen, velvet peony and oud, lavender, chamomile, vanilla, and then just plain old vanilla. The ones I'm not so keen on is the mandarin and sandalwood, the rock salt and driftwood, the tiger lily rain fragrance oils. So let me know, perhaps my favorites are your dislikes and vice versa. I've yet to be able to tell you what's popular with customers because we're nowhere near that stage either yet but we're getting there we are getting there hopefully you gain something out of all of this yes there's 12 vessels that i have claimed back which i am going to reuse again so that's quite a bit of money i've saved there to be fair let's check that there i haven't got to add anything to that i've just got to get it off the heat and bring it down to temperature and pour it the fragrance oil is already in it and then yeah we are on to phase three the final phase for today anyway i wanted to try the eco 12 the lx 16 or 18 oh tcr 3018 i've got so many wicks it's just ridiculous there's the tcr 3018 um i do have brls in here somewhere brl 18 again that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna start rolling these wicks out one by one get these wicked up get these out of the way and then we can focus on the baseline candles which is pretty much the thing I desperately want to get done today nice let's 
still keeping faith in me Eco 12. Let's pour them. And to be fair, I don't think there's enough wax there to pour that one. So change plan, we'll put those in wax melt, isn't it? Considering how much... Oh, that was exactly enough for one candle and one set of wax melts, not this one. So we can use that one in our baseline. So quite simple today. I just need 225 grams of wax in each. So 225, 450, 675. Tell me if I'm wrong, but speak now. So the CV135, no fragrance oil. I'm heating to 85 degrees and I'm gonna pour at 60. I'm using an LA, LX18 there. I'm going to use an Eco 12. So we'll get that popped into a vessel. And I'm going to use the CD10. My question is the curing time specifically because you need to allow the fragrance oil to bind with the wax. Hence, you need to leave it two weeks. Or is it something, I mean, to, for example, do I need to wait two weeks to test these candles? Or can I test them like tomorrow? Does anybody know the answer? It'd be pretty cool if I could start testing these immediately. Because our job now is to just keep making baselines and test the different wicks isn't it before we use any more fragrance oil in any more candles we need to crack this first that has reached 85 degrees it's now cooling so that's good many of you know if coconut wax can be melted to a higher temperature and be perfectly fine that information would be lovely so heat 75 oh Talking of which, the other stuff is very nearly at 60. Good to go. So let's pour that. Rather a large bag of cocoa wax which I've obviously used before. I can't remember using it, but I've got a peg on it. We're gonna make the pure coconut wax ones first. Right, let's do this. Get that on the boiler. The candles we made in the last video that me and Emsie did. I can show you those because they've all been sitting there now for two weeks. One thing I will say for the CB135 is that the tops are so smooth. They're all, all of them have come out really, really smoothly. No problems at all. And that was heating them to 85 and pouring them at 60. That is melted to 75 degrees. That's so far so good. Quite a productive day. You could tell summer is on its way because this has taken forever to come down in temperature. We're now at 61.2, so almost there, finally. And we are there. So let's get these three poured.
So I'm obviously making two of each. I've got to double my workings out from earlier. With 315 grams of soy to start with. So. And I need 135 of the cocoa. And we're at temperature, so I'm going to pour these. This is the predominant, predominantly soy blend. Ah, perfect pour temperature. It looks they're already starting to set. Oh, is it the perfect pour temperature? We will discover the answer to that shortly. And yes, if anybody out there with your you lot and your knowledge, am I good to test these like tomorrow onwards or do I still need to give them two weeks to cure? That is the question. Right, let's do the last blend, the predominantly coconut blend. Same quantities, but switched. 115 grams of the cocoa, 135 of this one. It's quite exciting really, just to see, could end up with no results whatsoever. Well, we'll end up results, but they might not help us because they might all be rubbish still. But I do think this is the best strategy because now I can start ruling out wicks knowing they simply don't work with this wax. So yeah, should have done this months ago. So we're almost there, 61.9 degrees, nearly at the pouring temperature of 60. And I thought of another question. When I finally crack this candle malarkey and I start using my big like urn thing for all the wax, when you come to pour, well, obviously, at the moment, I weigh the wax out in my jug in the pellet form. Now, this might be a really stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. When it's all melted in the urn candle melting thing, which I showed you in my last video, do is the weight the same? Because obviously I'll be pouring it as liquid. So if I needed 300 grams of wax, it still weigh the same in liquid form as it does in pellet form. Now I'm assuming it does. But can anyone clarify? 60.1, 60.0. Let's pour the last of the candles. That is it. We have made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven candles. Freed up a lot of vessels that have been sitting on my shelf doing absolutely nothing because they were all failed candles. So that's quite exciting. And in doing so, freed up some shelf space. <laughs> so that's also very nice. I'll just put these with the others and I will show you the candles. I have noticed so far that the coconut candles, the pure coconut ones, have got a more sort of translucent look to them than the soy wax, which is a lot creamier looking. And there they all are. So there's the soy wax quite a creamy looking wax and then I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera probably not but that's the cocoa ones and they're just a little bit more translucent sort of like they've got a bit of a blue tinge to them but there we are and there's the first of the blends just setting now and there's the last of the blends which we've literally just poured 
So, all in all, what a productive day. The time now is five past three. So, we've been doing that for 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 6 hours. <laughs> Hopefully, 6 hours well spent. Oh, and also, we had our little wax melts from earlier too. So, here we are again. We're at that, have we or have we not cracked the candle stage? I don't know if I've got to wait two weeks or a couple of days to find out. So yes, if anyone out there can answer that question, there's no fragrance oil in these at all, just wax and wicks. Can I start testing tomorrow or the next day? So yeah, there we are. I've still got to burn test the ones we made in the last video because they've now cured for two weeks. It's In fact, they're going past two weeks, so that's all good. So I shall do that hopefully in the next few days and yeah then we can get these baseline ones done i might just test them all at the same time be done with it <laughs> but yeah so there we are now hopefully there's something to be taken from this video there's a few questions for you all to answer i think i think i asked a few along the way but yeah if the questions come up and someone out there can answer them then that is fab because not only would it help me but it will help others too i'm sure so thank you very much for joining me on this rather long day of candle ma making and i hope you're all good should have said that at the start and hopefully i'll check back in with you or i will see you in the next video who knows what results of perhaps the exciting kind i will have to share with you until then take care and yeah see you soon all right over and out. Bye.